In the last few videos, we installed TrueNAS as a virtual machine inside Proxmox. Then, we went one step further. We passed physical hard drives straight through to the TrueNAS VM, giving it direct raw access to those disks. And from there, we built storage pools. If you missed any of those steps, no worries. I highly recommend checking them out first. You can hit the i button up top or find the links in the description below. It'll just make everything from this point on much easier to follow. So now our storage pools are ready. They're running. But here's the thing, they're not usable yet. Not by other devices on our network. To make our storage accessible, we need to share it. And we do that using network protocols like SMB, NFS, or ISCSI. Which one you choose depends on what kind of devices we'll be connecting. But hold on, before we jump into configuring any of those sharing protocols, there's one critical step we can't skip. Permissions. In TrueNAS, permissions are handled through users and groups. And that's what controls who gets access and what they're allowed to do once they're in. So in this video, we're gonna set the stage for secure, organized sharing. So let's get started with managing users and groups in TrueNAS. First, on the left-hand menu, click on the Credentials tab. Now click on Users. Right away, you'll see two built-in users, Root and TrueNAS Admin. These are system accounts, but we're not here for those today. We're going to create our own custom users. But before creating a user, let's take a quick look at Groups. Again, click on the Credentials tab, and just under the Users tab, you'll find the Groups tab. You'll see that there's already a TrueNAS Admin group by default but we need to create our own. Head back to the Users tab and look for the Add button in the top right corner. Click that to open up the User Creation form. Start by typing in the full name of your user. As you do that, TrueNAS will automatically generate a username for you, but you can change it if you want to. Next up, enter a password and make sure to confirm it right below. You'll see the UID User ID field automatically filled in, starting from 3000 by default. Don't worry about changing that unless you have a reason to. Now here's a key point, make sure the option create new primary group is checked. This will create a new group with the same name as the username and assign it as the user's primary group. Once everything looks good, go ahead and hit save. Now that we've created our new user, take a look. You'll see it's been assigned a UID of 3000. Let's check out the groups connected to this user. Head back to the credentials tab on the left hand menu. Then click on Groups. Yep, a brand new group just popped up. It has the same name and same GID as the user we just created. When we set up that user, we made sure the Create New Primary Group option was checked. And TrueNAS did the rest. It built a group just for that user and tied them together. Now that we know TrueNAS usually assigns IDs automatically, let's try something different. This time, we will set a specific user ID ourselves. So let's go back to the Users page and click on Add at the top right corner. We'll start filling out the details. Set the username to User2. Type in a password, then confirm it just like we did before. Now you will notice the user ID is auto-filled, but we're going to change that. I will set it to 2000. And make sure Create New Primary Group is still checked. Once everything looks good, click on Save. Now we've just created a user called User2 with a manually set UID of 2000. Let's go check the group. Head back to the groups page, and there it is. A new group named User2 was created automatically. But take a closer look at the group ID. It's 3001, not 2000. Because while we told TrueNAS exactly what UID to use, we didn't do the same for the GID. So it just used the next number in line. But if you want a group to have a specific ID, you'll need to create that group manually and assign the GID yourself. If you're planning to use NFS shares, then without matching IDs across systems, you're going to run into file permission issues. I use NFS to mount my Docker containers, and my Linux user is named Tech, with both UID and GID set to 1000. So to avoid any permission issues, we will create a user and group in TrueNAS using the same IDs. This is a reliable way to keep everything working smoothly between systems. So let's start by creating the group. On the Groups page, click that Add button in the top right corner. 
Now set the group ID to 1000 because that's the ID I use on my Linux machine. Name the group tech. Click save. Now we move on to the user. Go to the users tab. Click add. Set the username to tech. Add a password. Confirm it. Scroll down to the user ID. Change the default and set it to 1000 to match the group. Now here's the important part. Uncheck the option that says create new primary group. Instead, from the primary group dropdown, select the tech group we just made. Hit save. And just like that, we got a user and a group, both named tech, both using ID 1000. We're also going to make a group that multiple users can share. This makes it much easier to manage shared permissions. Go back to the groups. Click add group. I will set the group ID to 4000. You can use any ID which is available. And name it team. Then click on save. Now it's time to add users to that group. Back to the users tab. We'll start with tech. Click Edit, scroll down to Auxiliary Groups, add Team, and hit Save. We'll do the same for User 2 and User 1, edit each one, add the Team group and save. Now we have a group which we can use to apply similar access to multiple accounts. These are the basic ways to generate users and groups for TrueNAS, but there is one important thing we need to do. It is not a good practice to use the default admin account. So we're going to set up tech as our new admin user and lock the default admin account. So let's start by testing if tech can even log in. I'm opening a private browser window to keep things separate from our current session. Let's enter the username, the password, and yep, just as expected, login fails. That's because tech doesn't have admin rights yet. But no worries, we're going to fix that right now. Back in the main session, still logged in as the default admin, let's first take a quick look at the TrueNAS underscore admin account. Click edit, and you'll see it's part of the built-in underscore administrators group. That's what gives it admin access. Now let's do the same for tech. Click edit, scroll to auxiliary groups, add built-in underscore administrators, and click save. Back in our private browser window, let's try logging in again as tech. And this time, it works. We're in. Tech is now officially an admin. Right now, we have two users who can log into the TrueNAS dashboard. And since the settings are as per user, we can personalize the experience. Let me show you. While logged in as tech, let's go to System, General Settings. Then open Settings of GUI section. Let's change the theme to Dracula and also turn off usage collection to stop sending anonymous data. Click save. Now, if we log back in as the original admin, you'll notice none of those changes are applied. That's because personalization is user specific. So yes, you can have multiple admin users, each with their own preferences. But there's one more thing we need to handle. Right now, tech can log in, but doesn't have full permissions. If we click on the shell tab, Access denied. We are getting an error that this account is currently not available, which means we do not have permission to access the shell. Let's fix that. Head back to users, and once again, use the TrueNAS admin account as our reference. Click edit. Scroll down, and you'll see two key settings. Shell is set to ZSH, and allow all pseudo commands is checked. That's the difference. Now let's make those same changes for tech. Edit the user. Set the shell to ZSH. Check allow all pseudo commands and hit save. Let's try the shell again. And it works. Tech now has full terminal access. And can run administrative commands using sudo. At this point, both accounts, TrueNAS under Stradman and Tech, have the same level of access. But since we're sticking with best practices, we're going to lock the default admin account now. While logged in as Tech, go to Users page and look for TrueNAS admin account. Then click on Edit. Scroll down 
and check lock user. Click save. Now try logging in as the old admin. Access denied. Locked out just as we planned. So now Tech is our new admin, fully configured with matching UID and GID and ready to manage the system. In the next video, we'll start using these users and groups to set up ACLs and Unix permissions so we can properly share our datasets across the network. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if I missed anything or you've got a better way, drop it in the comments below. See you in the next one.